Aguilera and Hilly and, and Rebecca was whispering in my ear, that Nicola is in the back. So happy to see Nicola. Okay, uh, we're going to study one of the important topic uh, topics in the New Testament mentioned prophesied 300 times about the coming of Jesus Christ. Now in the Old Testament about the coming of the Savior of the world prophesied about 100 times from the Old Testament. So our topic today is a very interesting topic. It's a topic that, uh, to inform us, not, on, not only to be ready, but to appreciate the wonderful destination of our long-suffering journey patiently waiting and enjoying the faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Very exciting. Week after week we come to this place and enjoy the fellowship of God. And you can feel how the worshiping give their purpose of singing and touching the very presence of God and God is blessing us or we are standing or sitting. We can worship the Lord. Wonderful assurance and the stamp of God's approval, His presence in our midst. Whether it is rainy season, hot season of the day, and whether we are few or many, the same spirit and God's presence is in our midst. So this afternoon we're going to enjoy together in this journey uh, in the book of Second Peter chapter 3. God's judgment in deliverance. God's judgment to the whole world and then the deliverance to God's people. Uh, yesterday, we had the men's picnic at Istanbul Park. And, you know, and also the kids, uh, some of our kids uh, can see Kandra is uh, she's so happy to testify how they were blessed because somebody sponsored the kids to enjoy the swimming in the West Ride. They had a good time also, they were blessed. While well, some, uh, some of them got sick today. And so in the park yesterday, it was a beautiful place for, uh, we went to the place a couple of times, three times, but the main place of Istanbul, we went there yesterday, it was a beautiful place, and it is a beautiful place for a church of a picnic. And we have some comment, this good place, walking distance is the beach, and there's a small body of water here, safe for the children. And we have the park, and we have the, some of the rides there, little rides or, uh, you know, slides. And we have the barbecue place, very, a very big uh, the place there where we are covered party or something to enjoy. So we have a good time yesterday and so we'll make some plan through the coordinators to have the fun time, uh, fun time together as a church. So let's enjoy while it's still uh, summertime or hot season. Now, in our conversation yesterday, it, I don't know, it, there was a, you know, we need the sunshine because the breeze was, was still cold from the from the ocean, so uh, we were under the heat of the sun, and we were just sitting there with my guitar, and then uh, Monching just addressed a little kind of comment, and we we're just having some informal sharing, and she said, uh, he said about the, the coming of the Lord, some believe about the pre-tribulation, before the tribulation, that Christ will come, and then in the middle of the tribulation, some believe Jesus might come, or maybe after the seven years tribulation, Jesus might come. Good, good topic, and we don't go, uh, we don't go uh, deeper on that. Just make some little comments, and those are pre-trib, mid, or the post-tribulation. But I want you to see that since Christ is coming, the whole world needs to know what time is it as far as the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned. What time of the day? Now, now, I cannot make a mathematical uh, uh, specific time table when is he coming, but for sure, Jesus is coming again, and he will judge the world, the whole world, but he will deliver his own people from his fierceness of his anger. So, we will be delivered. So, thank God for that beautiful message. Now, in our anniversary two weeks ago, we talk about the time of Noah. We talk about Noah, and we can see in the book of Genesis, if there's, 
Oh, thank you. Okay, just a point and just uh, to look back, and these are not informational only, but it defying for the believers. So, is that something to be afraid about or something? God, I can see, I can have the full picture of what had happened then and what had happened in the present or in the now. 6 5, you can see here. Now, the Lord observed the extent of the people's wickedness in the time of Noah, and he saw that all their thoughts. All their thoughts were consistently and totally evil, complete depravity. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will completely wipe out this human race that I have created, yes, and I will destroy all the animals and birds too. I am sorry I ever made them. So you can see in the context, I just a uh, portion in the Old Testament, a portion, another in the Old Testament, and then in the book of Peter. I'll sum it, sum, summarize it as short as I can this afternoon. Can you just imagine, looking back to the time of Noah, it took the man of God and took God to wait for people to respond to the saving grace of Jehovah God, uh, <coughs> Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah, or El Shaddai, or Elohim, the Trinity name of God in the Old Testament, or El Shama, or what, uh, Chidkin, or Righteousness of the Old Testament. These are the name of God ascribed as far as this uh, relational attribute to people is concerned. Now, can you just picture in your mind, for 120 years, God is so gracious, extending the length of time for 120 years, but the people did not receive the message of God. And the Bible is very clear because the intent and the thoughts of men were consistently evil. There is an ongoing progressive, uh, that's like in the music, the crescendo going up and up and up. And then the Bible is very clear, uh, continually, not up and up, but continually, the wickedness of men was great in the earth. So that was during the time of Noah. Now, how, how can I describe it if I try to figure out in the context of the Word of God? Now, in other words, as I try to uh, visualize based on the description of the man of God Moses in the first book of the Old Testament Genesis, the whole faculties of men, I said the whole faculties of men, first from the five senses to the mind, to the emotion, and to the will. And of course, the spirit that will communicate to the Lord is not communicating because they are dead in trespasses and sin. What happened, the five senses, the mind that dictates, that, that will control the movement of the five senses that will satisfy the appetites or the animal appetites. So, man in the time of Noah is totally corrupt, very strong word, totally corrupt and then perverted especially morally, perverted morally. Now the sad reality is, men and women can no longer distinguish during the time of Noah, and they cannot know their high destiny, that man is not created for this, but the physical sphere only on earth. There is beyond, which is a beautiful destiny of the human soul, that one day they will have a body that is destined to eternity. They don't have, they have no knowledge about their higher destiny in the Lord. So their philosophy, as we know during the time of Noah, be happy, eat, and drink, because tomorrow we will die anywhere. Anyway, anyway. In other words, like an animal, be happy and eat as much as you can, enjoy as much as you can. Tomorrow I will die, and that's it. But that is not it. So people have no more knowledge of what is wrong to what is right. Very barred, completely. Uh, completely uh, like a, a desert. There is no water at all. In other words, we use it in the uh, there are desensitized, which means it's numb. If you pinch it, there is no sensation mentally, emotionally. They kept, kept living in sinning, in sinning, in sinning. It is just like the norm of the day. And there is no light at all. No, sorry. There is light. Noah and the family are the messages that there is God of the heavens and the earth. So what happened? They, they synthesize within, listen to me, and all unrighteousness without or to the outside by. 
In other words, the fountain of the mind, you know, the fountain that is spring of water, supposed to create and produce good ideas and good thoughts, is now incurably poisoned. Now, the flows of ideas in the mind is contaminated. Now, when the water is contaminated, it's like the venom of a snake that can kill and destroy. So the man gets used to do evil as normal. So God's judgment, as I finish that, God destroyed them all in the book of Genesis. So God said to Noah, 613, I have decided to destroy all the living creatures, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Yes, I will wipe them all from the face of the earth. Good news from the Old Testament. So this is our good news to us even this afternoon. That's why we enjoy listening. We enjoy worshiping God. We persistently moving forward. What happened? God saved Noah, the wife, and the daughters, and then uh, the son-in-law. They're all saved. Eight members of the family. God spared them and God repopulate once again the planet Earth through those uh, four couples. Noah and the wife and the three kids and the respected husbands and wives. Another thing that we can see in Genesis 13, as we'll jump in a few moments to the main exposition, is during the time of Lot. Okay, Genesis 13, 13. Okay, thank you, Nathan. The people of this area this, were unusually wicked in sin greatly against the Lord. Now, here is not again the description of the time of Sodom and Gomorrah during the time of Abraham. And the, the people there, they, in other translation, we exceeded, were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. That's in the other translation, the uh, New King James Version. Exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Here, sin greatly against the Lord. So during the time of blood. Now, how can you describe in a word of God about Sodom and Gomorrah. I want you to see in Genesis 19.5, if we have here there. Okay, there is. Follow me here. So right there we can see how the Lord is said, uh, children, I want you to know, and you can understand how I judge the word then, and you'll understand how I will judge the coming word in your time, or before, uh, when we die, or before we die, how the earth will be burned. Okay, here we are. Genesis 19, 5, and then 12 to 13. Follow me. That the word is plain to all of us. Okay, because here, now God sent two angels to Lot. And God now was, he called it Theophany, in a form of an angel, was speaking to Abraham. So God, the Father, or Jesus Christ, was talking to Abraham, and the two angels went to the house of Lot. And so when Lot saw, saw this angel, if you graciously, uh, uh, I want to invite you to stay with me because it's uh, almost night time. I'll prepare some food for you, eat, and I have a place for you to stay just for the night. The following day, sir, or with reverence to you, you can just go ahead wherever you want to go. Uh, so that was, that was the context. And so what happened here, when the two angels went in, sleep and, and then uh, Lot prepared a good food and cake, and verse 5, the men of the city of Sodom, when they heard that there was two men inside the house of Lot, you look at here, verse 5, they shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out. Can we have sex with them? So you can see, during the time of Lot, the homosexual, the pervert, the lesbianism, and all the horrible things sexually was ascending, and it is so filthy and yucky to the nostrils of God. So you can see there, men were looking for the angel to have physical relationship. And so the angel said to Lot, they're trying to break the door. And so the angels make a, a strong bolt and they'll become blind. They cannot find where the door was. And so the angel said to Lot in the book of Genesis, do you have any relatives here in the city? The angel asked, get them out of this place. Sons and law, sons and daughters, or anyone else. You can see there, for uh, we will destroy the city completely. The city will be destroyed completely. The stench, the, to, to have, look at the word, the stench of the place has reached the Lord and He has sent us to destroy it. Another 
destroyer and angel would destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But I want you to understand how the Lord, take note of this, give special care and attention even to all of us today if something happened with the world, something with the, uh, with, with the bomb or the, uh, you know, all the bomb today, there is a providential care that God will be given to us how the Lord will spare and protect and deliver His people. Now, in the context of Abraham communicating with, the, with God, and the two angels communicating with God, and Abraham asked the Lord, God, if you will destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God, would you destroy also the innocent, the people who trusted you, would you destroy them together with the guilty people? Good context of the question. Lord, in other words, we are following you. Um, um, are we going to die with them? Because they are the one doing some bad stuff. And are we going to die with them? So, God, if it's not... Uh, if I will ask some question to you. If there are about 50 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah, would you say, uh, would you send the hail and the fire from heaven? And God said, Abraham, no. I will spare the city. God, don't be angry. If there were about 45, no. 40, 30, 20, no. 10. I said to you two weeks ago, just uh, like a, uh, a conjecture in my mind, and Abraham did not ask anymore. 10, he probably presumed, probably presumed, Lot and the wife and the children, plus the maybe grandkids or son or whatever, they are all at least 10 or 11 saints. God, if there are 10, would you destroy? And God said, no. It's a conjecture. It's this man been, uh, been, uh, talking to you about. If there are 10, uh, less than 10 maybe uh, for, uh, for Lot. And later on, Lot is stopped asking the Lord. I want you to see that in that communication with God, Lot and the wife and the two daughters, the angel, four of them, and how God spared their life, get out right away from the place because this place will be burned. Four people were spared by God, they were not included to be burned with Sodom and Gomorrah people. They were spared. Sad to say, the wife of blood look back. The angel said, don't look back, don't look back, just go straight, go to the mountain. They make some kind of dialogue, sir or angel, could you spare that city for us? Mountain is too far, could you go to that place? And the angel said, go ahead, make it fast, make it fast. Right there, four people, God preserved them that they are not included in the judgment of God in Sodom and Gomorrah. I want you to see that in this wonderful revelation of God, we can learn and understand that the righteous shall not be punished for the crimes of the ungodly. Wow! Good feeling. God, thank you for that. So application, your prayers and mine will be presented to God. Okay? When our prayer to the Lord will not come back to us unheard or rejected. So when we pray here, He will not come back to us unheard. God heard that. There's a time element, maybe a week, a month, but God heard our prayer. He will not say no. All the promises of God in Christ Jesus is just an amen. And your prayers and my prayers will not be rejected unless the prayer is outside in the circumference of the promises of the living God. It should be inside of the Word of God. So we are all saved because of God's love to us. The Bible says our prayers is God's delight. So when you pray, God is happy. Let's go now to chapter 3, to the point of chapter 3. The whole chapter 3 of the second Peter is to remind the believers, number 1, from verses 1 to 4. This is my second letter to you, their friends. And both of them I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember and understand what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. First, I want you to remind you that in the last days, there are these coffers who will laugh at the truth and do every evil thing they desire. They will be 